I'm in Kenya, y'all. <laughs> and uh, it has been a magical experience. It is beautiful where I am currently in Mombasa, Kenya. Um, I'm literally overlooking the Indian Ocean. Yeah, it's dope. You will hear the birds in the background, the caretaker, the home we're staying in, and you know, just some movement about because we're out here, <laughs> out here having a very restorative experience. Um, and you know, while I had anticipated maybe doing a first 48, the first 24 hours, you guys know I love to do my research and spend some time, you know, without, it's, uh, intentionally speaking out of term which i may say some things that you know are different because the truth is i've been here three days but what i've noticed so far has been um another reminder of how the more you know the more you uncover the more you expose yourself to the less you actually know and in this video, I'm going to just talk about my first few days in Kenya and what my experience has been like. So welcome to the channel if you're new. My name is Ashley. On this channel, Ashley in Africa, I talk about my experience living, moving, and doing business here on the continent of Africa. I share my experience of love, of motherhood, and entrepreneurship. Um, and I'm also the creator of Africa Investors Academy, a community of entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs and investors who have an interest in doing business, expanding a business or investing in assets on the continent to potentially retire early. So if you're interested in what I have to say, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, share it with someone who might find value in it as well. And yeah, thank you to all of the subscribers and returning viewers. I appreciate you um, on this journey with me. So yeah, let's get into it. As you know, I have my notes. Um, my first days in Kenya have just been beautiful, fantastic. Like I mentioned, I'm currently in Mombasa, Kenya, but I spent the first 24 hours in Nairobi. Um, I landed at Nairobi Airport, which was, you know, a bit vintage. <laughs> it was a bit vintage of an airport um, but learning what I'm learning just about infrastructure in developing countries is when things tend to be older they were there longer right which was a verification of the fact that Nairobi has been a hub for global business for centuries and um, you know things like the airport the roads buildings it was very reminiscent um of a new york uh or a san francisco with a level of like hills um with buildings you know as not not as dense as either new york or san francisco um for people in the u.s to have a you know a state of reference but you know these massive you know high-rise buildings for commercial and you know residential use you know wrapped in with beautiful greenery so yeah riding through um nairobi to where i was staying in my airbnb it was just a very very just eye-opening experience of course being on the toll road which you know had this like decadence that was very familiar very reminiscent of like a chinatown so i did learn that those were some chinese roads um and i saw a lot of western businesses here waste management um was the one that really stood out the most from like the placard on the building but i think i had heard that um you know samsung is actually one of the biggest manufacturers which is not a western business um, but they are in and have a huge presence in Nairobi um, you know landing back to the airport when I saw like the you know the vintageness of the airport I was brought back to this series that I had been watching um, called The Crown I don't know if any of you all watched The Crown and it honestly was a show I had little interest in watching years ago when it came out, primarily because I just didn't have an interest in 
you know, British history as an American, they teach us, you know, we were independent of the British. They weren't the good guys, um, you know, dirty old bloats and all of the like derogatory things that we learned about the British as an American. But I also struggled with the accent when I tried to watch it. And fast forward three, four years later, living in a multicultural, multilinguistic community, I'm a lot more familiar, you know, with understanding people with different accents and also having a interest now, I think, historically as it pertains to what the British has done here on the continent of Africa. And I want to say it was the first episode or the second episode of The Crown where the, you know, former queen was at the time a princess and she went on what they call a world tour and was in the country of Kenya um, during the time of her father's passing, who was the king, where she essentially became the queen and during this royal tour not world tour royal tour she landed in nairobi at the airport gave a speech along with her court about the partnership between the british and the kenyan now it was a little cheeky you know but of course i'm sure it was a lot more intense than they put it in this in this show but she's speaking from a position of like oh we're the you know we're the reason why you are now a civilized nation and whatever whatever but I remembered that when I got to the airport and because you know we landed from an international flight landed on the tarmac to walk to the check-in um, and that was that tarmac I remember where she gave that speech to the different kings um, and chiefs of different tribes here in Kenya and yeah that was the reminder again for me just about the global business that was happening here in kenya and not you know i'm sure not without strife not without struggle not without um yeah very very hard things um slavery colonization all that so that was something that was like just a personal reference for me when landing in Nairobi and from there you know that trip into the city into the town just seeing all of the beauty seeing the billboards with black families black men black children black women African women African men African children um, even though there were some references of the west you know there was still very clear visual visualizations that i was in africa that i am in africa right so that was the biggest thing the infrastructure i noticed um you know the second thing was probably the diversity of people i don't think i was surprised really just being in such a close country in tanzania um, to Kenya, I was made familiar of like the population, um, that there was a really strong Asian population here that has been here, you know, second, third, fourth generation. Um, you know, but to see an emotion is a little bit different. I think also in the influence of the food. And so being able to go to restaurants that were fabulous with like Asian cuisine, Indian, Japanese, Chinese, Thai, um, yeah, like, and in those restaurants, just seeing the, the mix, you know, of people, of Europeans, Asians, and, you know, many of us can have these conversations, um, and even some really like to complain about what these other countries um, are doing here on the continent, but the fact is that they are here and they are doing things and you know really see it in action for me isn't isn't uh something i struggle with it in fact inspires me because it, it inspires me to keep going it inspires me to share this information with people that aren't on the continent that haven't been on the continent to say hey yeah they're here they've been here you know and if not only they can do it we absolutely can because why is our birthright this is our land and so 
you know, seeing that level of diversity and seeing the way in which they're able to build, cultivate community, build economies, um, not even with only within themselves, but for the greater, you know, development of the cities and the countries, you know, it's, 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 it's cool to watch. Y'all know I love economic development. I get real excited when I see certain things happening. You know, the Chinese have been doing a lot of work in Kenya and, you know, their work, their development has given them, you know, access and leverage. And some may have their position. You know, I am shifting and becoming a little bit more understanding of just how the world moves. And not that it's right or wrong, but when you look at other countries and how they have gained access to Africa, what really is better? You know, is it developing, um, you know, infrastructure to help the growth of the economy? Or is it causing conflict to just come in and take the minerals that they want and, and leave? Um, you know, I'll let you decide on what you think is more appropriate, but I understand better being here on the ground, seeing these, you know, foreign economic development projects that um, the Chinese are doing. The diversity of a city also shows and represents a level of like world class, it being a world class destination. And that's probably one of the biggest things that I noticed. Um, it's because of the development. It's because of the conveniences or the economic development where those th where that is happening is where you will have an influx of um, international interest, right? And so, as an American, when we you know look at oh, there are constantly foreigners coming there. Well, that is when you have somewhat of a global destination and that is how these countries here on the continent are looking to develop how can they become world-class destinations that attract people from all over the world and kenya's done a great job at that you know and they're continuing to do a great job at that and i'll be um sharing just you know some additional content around some of the bigger uh city development projects that i've been researching about here and how the difference of someone who is from Kenya, who knows the Kenyan environment, knows the people, is building a more impactful, sustainable city um, than these other corporations and foreign entities that are t just building it with the capital and the muscle that they think they have. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, and let me know if there are any other things that you're interested in hearing me talk about as it pertains to the economic development of, you know, Kenya, um, Tanzania, or South Africa. The last thing um, that I'll mention is our experience in traveling from Nairobi to Mombasa. And originally, I think we were going to take the train, but we ended up driving. And that was a really beautiful experience because we got to learn a lot um, from our friend who drove us about you know, different industry, different business, different um, hist history, you know, presidents, foreign investment, and um, just getting a better perspective from somebody from the country of Kenya. And I noticed immediately just the manufacturing that was happening along this road. Um, I noticed, you know, the rail that went parallel to this road that we were on we drove through what felt like a national park for over six hours where we saw you know twiga giraffe we saw zebra we saw baboons we saw camels yes in the wild we were promised to see like some um you know elephants but we didn't get to see any elephants but we're told that you can see elephants you know during this drive but it was really you know it was a beautiful experience um you know seeing it was very reminiscent of what a road trip you know would look like in tanzania so a lot of the same like traditional housing traditional commercial spaces like towns um you know trade happening 
um and also re like being able to see people in their on their land cultivating their land as we were driving by and seeing how rich the soil was how dense the soil was and seeing people farm on their land that was you know just a, a beautiful experience and yeah it was a beautiful ride we're in Mombasa now we've been chilling at this beautiful villa just restoring and resetting we're gonna spend some time in the city doing a tour having some food doing some shopping yeah and learning some more history about Mombasa it is very familiar to me um you know like you know in like a um, Dar or even Zanzibar just with the infrastructure the Arabic infrastructure um, it, it appears to be after riding through the town that it is um, very familiar like being in Dar or Zanzibar so I'm excited to see and learn more about what was happening up here on this coast you know Mombasa is actually the largest port in East Africa in the EAC um, and so there's a lot of trade globally happening in Mombasa. I saw, again, so many trucks and containers coming from Mombasa, heading into Nairobi. Um, you know, and when you see logistics, you know that there's global business being done, trade being done. So no idea what was in those containers, where those containers were from. Mombasa cement was a big one. Um, but yeah, I'm sure we'll hear today on the tour just what are some of the biggest things that they import, what are their biggest exports. I'm really excited to see development, the real estate development is like throughout Mombasa because the coastline is just gorgeous. I'll be sure to pop in, you know, a clip of that so you get to see what I am seeing because this is just a breathtaking experience. But yeah, that's what... I've noticed in you know my first few days here in Kenya I cannot wait to share more if you found value in the content please be sure to like it I will absolutely be preparing um, some travel itineraries for those that are interested in traveling to Nairobi and Kenya um, you can look out for those on ashleyinafrica.com so until the next video I'll see you soon